Pit sawing was widely used in the 17th and 18th centuries for sawing the largest timbers. The pit is a trench deep enough for a person to stand in. The sides are shored up with timber or wattle and there are runners along each side at ground level. The log is suspended over the pit on rollers. The ends of the rollers are shaped into an octagon. This makes them more stable, although they can still be rolled along the runners. The advantage of pit sawing is that the timber does not have to be lifted. Even the largest timbers can be manhandled over a pit at ground level. The main drawback is that the pit had to be used a lot to justify the digging. This means that logs had to be dragged to the pit from a long distance. As with double trestle sawing, the top dog lifts and steers the saw, while the underdog does most of the work to advance the cut on the downstroke. So it's not surprising that the underdog has a shorter life expectancy than the top dog. As the saw nears a roller, it is a relatively easy matter to move the log along the pit. Can you go a bit further? When the end is reached, there are two ways to finish the cut. The lower handle, called the box, can be removed from the saw and the blade taken out of the cut and moved to the other side of the roller. It is, however, much easier to cut as far as possible and to split out the end. This leaves this telltale triangular mark on the end of the sawn face. This is very different from the split end in timber sawn using a double trestle, where the split is made across the entire depth of the cut. So the perpendicular saw marks angling down to this small triangle at the end of the cut are the fingerprint of pit sawn timber.